guys we are doing another live stream and uh, by the title we are indeed building my smallest 24-hour digital clock so this is kind of like a follow-along tutorial so I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, yeah let's get started all right so you can see right here I'm using my new uh, um, tripod so Everything should go to plan. So there's no materials list. We're just gonna start with the base here. So for the base, I am gonna be using um, smooth stone blocks. And we're gonna start by placing a 28 wide by 19 deep area of smooth stone blocks. And now we will extend this back 18 more. And now back to the right by 27. And then back to the start by 16. And now your base should look like this. And now with this all in place, we can now fill in the remaining gaps with stone blocks, smooth stone blocks. And now we can come to the bottom right corner and place three lamps. I mean redstone lamps. And now delete the two below this one. Now we're going to use black concrete for the display color. However, you can use coal if you want, if you're in survival. And now we're going to extend this black concrete up by six and out by three. Also do extend this out by three at the top of this pillar. And now with this frame in place, repeat this five more times. But before that, we're actually going to do a little bit of spacing first. So we don't want them all together as one big counter. So follow along as I place these blocks. So you want to actually extend this one out by five, then do another one by three, and then repeat this again two more times. And now you should have something that looks like this. And now we can extend these pillars of black concrete six blocks tall on top of each redstone lamp we just placed.
And now between these redstone lamps with the bigger gaps, we're gonna come in two blocks, sorry, three blocks, and then we're gonna place basically at the middle another six tall column. So make sure that you have between each redstone lamp and this pillar, three blocks of space for two displays. Sorry, my bad. We're actually going to start by placing in our column for our colons. So you just wanna make sure that there's a one gap space here and then do the same over here one more time. And with these column columns in place, we can now go ahead and extend the top beams all the way to the other side. However, just make sure that they hang off three, just like this one down here. And now your frame should look like this. So now with all these pillars and these frames in place, we can now go ahead and we can put only in the bigger columns our six, seven segment displays. So follow along how I build these. Also in between the two holes of this display that basically separate our seven segments, we want to make sure that we fill the remaining spaces in with black concrete or coal blocks if you're in survival. And now we can repeat this five more times. Now for this one on the very end, just make sure that it stays between these three blocks that hang off the side by three. And with that all in place, we can now place in our colons. So you're now gonna come into the remaining two columns that have one by six tall space sorry, one by five tall space, and then you're gonna follow along as I place these blocks. It should look something like this with three holes in there, and that's what you will fill in with the rest of your display color. <clears throat> and now repeat this one more time. And now the frame is complete. So before we start doing the redstone part, let's go and let's wrap a frame around here of your color of choice. I decided to use white concrete since it is easy to get white wool in survival. And with this frame in place, we can now go ahead and we can start by also adding a second layer around to finish off the base of the clock. Sorry, the face of the clock.
Now you can leave it like this if you want, but this is actually here for a good reason. And we will be filling this remaining space over the displays and lights with black stained glass. This is a very good feature as it helps to provide less headaches when you look at this clock in the dark. And now your face of the clock is done. And now we can also go ahead and extend this pillars at the first layer that we just placed before placing the black stained glass to the ground. Also behind this, extend this out one and make sure to run a layer along top here like I do here. And now with the face complete, we can now start by cutting out some indents in this first layer at the very back here. So follow along as I cut out these holes. And with that all finished, we can now go ahead and bust out these blocks as I do here. These are only going to be temporarily busted out so we can place in the thing that we need to place underneath the lamp. But before we go ahead and do that, now go ahead and add levers and buttons so you can control the clock from the outside. I decided to use oak buttons, however you can use whatever button you wish, but I would recommend these as these are easy to get in survival. So now follow along as I place these buttons and levers. And now we can go ahead and we can come back here and place in our blocks and rem that we removed. So now we can go ahead and we can place in these blocks down here. And then after this, we can fill in the rest of this back layer or back border underneath the clock frame. So follow along as I place these blocks. Also, now follow along of what I place on top of here. So on the first one under each lamp, you're basically gonna place a comparator, except for this second gap, you're actually gonna have a redstone dust going into the comparator to cancel it. This also avoids it, you from using the seconds counter button while the clock is running as this redstone dust does cancel this comparator and now you're going to copy this five more times underneath each lamp And with all those in place, now fill in the remaining gaps that we are not using. And now before we start extending this out even further, follow along as to where I place our segment connection points. So basically you're going to place seven of them and follow along as I place these. It should look something like this. Now comparators and redstone dust will be used. Also, make sure that they are only in this order only, otherwise the clock will not work.
And now what you see in front of this first display, repeat it for the other five displays. And with these all in place, we can now go ahead and extend these comparators that we placed under the lamps out by one more block. And now we'll also build up one block in front of these comparators. Also, make sure that you place a lamp right, a block right behind each lamp like I do here. And now copy this to the other five comparators that we just extended. And now we'll also extend this down by one. And copy this for each one. And now we place redstone dust like I do here on top of these two blocks that extend down. This will be so that when our lamps are on, we know that we cannot press the buttons. So this is a very helpful circuit. However, you do not need to use it if you don't want to. But this is a very helpful circuit as it does help with a lot of spam resistant problems. But anyways, now we're gonna go and we're gonna extend each one of these out by one block and then down by one onto the floor here. And then make sure to place a repeater here, set the two ticks with a regular piston in front of it. And now repeat this for the other five down the line.
And with these in place, we can also add one to the side like I do here. So just start by one block in front of this regular piston and then go over two to the left and place another one facing towards this one. And repeat that for each one down the line. And with those in place, we can now start extending our piston feed tape blocks. So now you're gonna grab out redstone blocks and then you're gonna extend nine wool or white concrete down the line as well. However, you're not going to repeat this for all of them. So go one digit to the left after this one and then place this one more time. My bad, you're gonna go the same thing again. So go past this display and then go to this piston feed tape over here and extend nine blocks out. And with those in place, we can now come over here to these ones that we just skipped and extend those blocks out by five concrete blocks. Also make sure that there's a redstone block in front of this regular piston here. Copy this to this one as well. And now for the last one, we will extend this one out by three so place one redstone block and then extend two concrete out and that will complete this first side of our feed tapes. And now we can just mirror this on the opposite side. And now at the block corners that have no blocks in them, we're now gonna dig down one. So see how there's no block in this gap? We're now gonna dig down one in each corner and place a torch in it. Sorry, redstone torch. And repeat this for each one that does not have any blocks in it. And with this done, we can now come over here. And now we're gonna start by doing this little circuit here that is going to make these shift, these corner ones. Once a block basically comes on top, we want these to shift after these have gone first. So to do that, we're gonna place this kind of redstone. So follow along as I place these blocks. And now you're gonna repeat this to each corner, one block up basically in front of this torch, up one block.
And now with these in place, we're now gonna start by extending our redstone all the way down to this one so that it corresponds with this one at the same time. So follow along as I place these blocks. However, after this piston right over here, you want to only extend down until the end of your concrete line. That is the designated length before the redstone block on the opposite side, as we will be placing an obsidian block here. So skip that one and place a block beside this other regular piston facing the front of the clock. And repeat this for each one. And now with this concrete in place, follow along how I place the mix of redstone dust and repeaters. Make sure though that these repeaters are always set to one tick on this side. So you want to make sure that these are only set to one tick apart. If they are any higher than that, the clock will break or the feed tape will not work properly, and blocks will be sent out everywhere. Now don't extend it all the way, just only extend it out to where you placed your last concrete block, and then I'll show you guys how we're gonna finish it up later. However, before we fill in this gap, we just need to copy this, what we did over here, to the rest of these. And now with these all done, we can now add obsidian blocks. So place them only on the sides of the redstone blocks that are on the feed tape. Or in the feed tape. By the way, make sure that the next regular piston is right basically on the other side of this obsidian block, except for the ones that have the colons. And with those in place, we're now going to place a block only on top of where the space was where we placed the obsidian blocks and do this for each one and place redstone block, sorry, and place redstone dust on top. And now that will complete the entire feed tape 
basically which will move the blocks around to display different numbers. So now with that all done, now come to the left side and on top of the redstone block, we're now going to go on the only left side of the feed tape, which the fist and face is the back of the clock. And we wanna place 10 sticky pistons, sorry, 10 regular pistons that face the sky. Only make sure that the number zero position, which we place the redstone block is up and all the rest are down. And you're not gonna repeat this the same way for this one. However, let's do it over here first. So you guys have an idea of what I'm really doing. And then we're gonna do it one more time to this one over here. Now basically for the rest of them, what I want you to do is do the same exact thing, only come to the end of your concrete block layer. And with these in place, we're now gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the actual coding blocks. Now, not all of these are used in the specific areas. However, these will be a much better idea to use than torches as they do have less lag. So now place redstone blocks up about nine blocks tall. Just follow along the way I place these and they should alternate a pattern and make sure that you only have one more redstone block on the top of this tower. Basically you should have a seven block tall layer, sorry, six block tall layer. And now you're gonna repeat this only so far for the ones that have been pushed up. And with those in place, we're now gonna repeat the same thing, only make sure that the last redstone block is only as tall as this last concrete block before the last redstone block. Now this is what it should look like. And now repeat this to the rest of them down the line at the designated spots of these last regular pistons.
And now with this all done, we're now gonna come to each of the regular pistons that face the back and the front of the clock of each feed tape and place 10 observers high. So basically you wanna stack 10 observers on top of each other on top of these regular pistons. And this is actually a very helpful circuit as well as this does push down after every single pulse of this over here. This will push down the previous line to show a different number. So follow along as I place these towers. Make sure it is also one block taller than this first layer of mix, basically a pattern of the white concrete and redstone blocks that we placed. And do this to the back piston as well. Repeat this for each one. All right, and now with these all in place, we're gonna go and we're gonna place redstone dust on top of each observer at the top. And with this all in place, we're now gonna go ahead and we're gonna place upside down regular pistons at the same exact length of each of the regular pistons that face the sky. So follow along as I place these. Also, Make sure to connect up the observer tower and place dust on top. So just connect it up like I do here and do this for each one. Copy this all the way down the line for each one. And with this all done, we can now go ahead and we can add our outputs 
So only do this on the only five that I do here. So do not do it basically on the one piston that is up still on the last seven segment display at the very left side of the clock. Otherwise, just place a torch on the side of each of the regular pistons that are up. And now we will place blocks right here on the side of the regular pistons at the front. Basically where we place the torch. And place a comparator facing the front of the clock as well on top of the blocks that we just placed. And finally, in front of each comparator, go up one block. So basically, you're going to place a block, a block up like so. Kind of similar to what we did right here. Now, for the ones between the colons, you're basically going to come out one block from below this block. Go out one block and to the left by two and right where my cursor is right now, you're gonna extend from this one right here out by two to the right. And just place redstone dust there for now. Now the reason I'm not placing another torch on here right now is because it will just trigger the output which we do not want to do right now. And with those all in place, we can now start our uh, segment lines. So you're going to have four on the left hand side, sorry, four on the right hand side, and then three on the left hand side for a total of seven lines of code. So follow along as I place these. Now watch carefully what I do on the bottom left line. You will place a block, but then you're going to place a regular stone slab. So just get out your stone or smooth stone slabs, whatever you want to use for your survival clock. However, I'm using for my creative clock smooth stone slabs as it does match the base color or style. This is so that the torch will not actually activate this because there will be a redstone dust placed here later on. And you only need to do this if there's a torch underneath. And now what we did to that, we're doing to the other four down the line, except for the last one, which will place a block where the piston is up.
And now on this last one, watch how I place the final bottom left layer. And with these lines in place, we can now go ahead and we can start by coding in our numbers. So let's go ahead and let's start with the first far right side digit. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to code in a zero. However, before this, let's go beside each one of these observer towers and place redstone dust on these blocks. Looks like I forgot to finish this. Hold on, let me finish it and do the same. All right, back to what I was doing. And now with this redstone dust in place, follow along carefully as I place the bottom left line code. But before this, let's actually place blocks on top of this one that goes into our alert lamps, as well as this two column that goes above this dust and this comparator. So follow along where I place these blocks. And now with this in place, we can now go ahead and start coding. So watch carefully the way I place comparators, blocks, and redstone dust on this bottom left line. Make sure you're starting at your far right digit. Now only copy this to the other two, skipping the Zero to fives. And now we'll go on to the bottom right line. So watch carefully again how I place redstone blocks and the redstone dust, the blocks and the comparators. And now for the top right segment, watch carefully again how I place redstone dust, regular blocks, as well as redstone comparators. And make sure to keep copying this to only the 0 through 9 digits, aka the longest ones.
And now for the last side on the right hand side for these longer uh, feed tapes, here's the top section, watch carefully. And now repeat this to the longer ones. And now let's go ahead and let's start the bottom left section and see how I was referring to this being a slab earlier and here's why. This exact section for each one of those requires a dust. Now follow along the rest of the way as I place the rest of these blocks back. Also at this certain point, you can see that this connects down. We'll go ahead and we'll place a block now. I just couldn't remember, so sorry about that. So go over to each one and place a block there as well. Do not place it for zero through two as we do not need it there. Or I don't think so, but we'll see. I was correct, you do not need a block here. And now follow along as I place the middle sections as well. And then finally, to finish off the 0 through 9 code, follow along as I place the final section, the top left section.
And now with these all done, we can now go ahead and connect them up to the displays. So follow along how I place these blocks connecting up to our seven segment display, basically connectors that we placed along earlier or a while ago. So I'll show you guys first how to do it and I'll explain very thoroughly as these need to be placed only in this order. So start by coming out from this one by three and then into the right by one to connect this up. Just place a line of redstone on top of all blocks. Now we should see only these two lit. However, we're now gonna cover that up. So this one is its own segment. So go ahead and place three blocks. However, raise this one up as I did find a glitch when building this. If you do not raise this block up, the eight and the nine will not have a bottom right section lit. It should look something like this. And now for the top right section, you're just gonna come out straight three blocks and then place redstone dust on top of all these blocks that we just placed. Next, for the final right side segment, we're gonna go and we're gonna place three blocks going forward. However, come down and make sure you're above one block going down one into the comparator. And place redstone dust on top of all these blocks to complete this side. You should now end up with something that looks like this. Now we'll do the left side. So go out one block. However, you're gonna place a slab here, like I said, as the torch is going here. However, you do not need to do this for the final section as there is no torch there. And what I mean by final section is I mean, this is literally for every single digit. Anyways, now place two redstone dust on top of this block and this slab, and then right beside this redstone dust, a comparator. And now let's do the middle section. So you're gonna come out three and kind of mimic the bottom section. So only you're gonna come out three and then instead of going right, you're going in left. And then place redstone dust on top of all blocks. You should see that the bottom, sorry, the middle section should not be lit. And finally, let's go ahead and let's extend this top left section out by three, place a comparator going into this block right here, and then two redstone dust behind it to complete this first display. And now in order to place a torch for the next carry over to the tens, we're gonna go in and we're gonna just test every number to make sure that we did it correctly. So make sure that each number that follows is the same as on my screen. Now leave it at the number nine, and then we're gonna copy this to the other two that are zero through nine. And also, if you're wondering what we're doing with the lever thing yet, well, we're doing that at the very end. So I just wanna focus on the displays in case my controller does die, so this may not be a full tutorial. However, I will have a live tomorrow night for the rest of it. But anyways, we're now gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy and paste these lines, or just build them manually. So you guys can skip forward past this if you don't want to see it. So just follow along the way I placed the previous lines. And if you don't know it, then please watch this as I do the last two for the zero through nine. But like I said, it's the same throughout every digit that we're gonna connect up.
Also, once you're done each one, make sure that it looks something similar to what it did over here and make sure to set it to number nine. And after this, we'll place the final torches. So the outputs for these to the fives, zero through fives are complete as well as zero through two. Sorry, I accidentally did a mistake here. It's always good to correct my mistakes and your mistakes as well. So that's why I also recommend you to also come back if that does not look the same as it did a few minutes ago on this one. And now set this zero to a nine. Also double check that each display number is correct. And let's repeat this one more time for this display individually. And now finally reset this, or just set it to a nine. While double checking that each number is correct for this last one. And with those all done, now your display should only have three nines lit. Now we'll do the zero through fives. So it's kind of similar to what we did. However, I'll show you how we can do it. So here's the bottom section. And obviously you're gonna copy this two times as we only have two zero through fives. Watch carefully for each section. Here's the bottom section. Bottom right section. Top right section.
top section. Bottom left section. Middle section. and top left section. And now we'll connect up these as the same way as we did through 0 through 9. So basically connect these lines up as I do here. And now check that each number is the same as on my screen here. Only set this to 5 and then move on to the next one. Let's do this next one in the same way. Also, don't be alarmed, in a few minutes my dad will come and say goodnight as he does work a midnight shift. However, anyways, but anyways, back to what I was doing.
And now make sure that each of your displays are connected properly. Sorry, my mistake. This is what your zero should originally look like. And now make sure that each number looks the same as it did on this one over here. Also set this one to five. And now we will do the zero through two. So watch carefully as I place each of these blocks. Bottom section. Bottom right section. Uh, top right section. Top section. Bottom left section. Middle section. And top left section. And now we'll connect this up, just like I did with 0 through 5 and 0 through 9. And now make sure that each display looks the same. However, now we're actually going to go ahead and set this guy to three and this guy to two. Which means that you should have now after this 2359 displayed on the clock. Or in other instance, 235959. This is what you should now have displayed on your clock. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually throw in the clock real quick. This is going to be the clock that is des designated behind the lever here. However, before that, I'm actually going to go ahead and put on the colons right here between these ones. So only do this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just place a lever in between these both and flick it down. No matter what, these should always be powered. However, you can use redstone blocks if you don't have access to levers. But anyway, now we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna build the clock. So watch carefully as I build this. And now if we flick the lever down, the clock should actually start running. However, we're not going to do that. Well, I will show you really quickly how it runs. So just go ahead and do this right here and remove this redstone dust so that nothing gets powered. And go ahead and flick the lever down so we can see how it works. Hold on. It 
seems like I did something wrong. Instead of this, I'm actually going to extend it downwards instead. That was my mistake. It actually has to go like this. Sorry, like this. And now the clock should run just fine. Make sure this is only set to four ticks though. And then the redstone dust can be connected back up here so that it actually starts the feed tape to run and change numbers. However, we're not gonna be doing that now, so just place that redstone dust back there for now. Before we get started with the final parts of the clock, we're now gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually come in here and we're gonna now make the circuit for the flashing colons. So this other colon that is currently blank, we're gonna hook up to a one tick pulse. So every second, this blinks on and off to represent the seconds counter working. Otherwise, it should be off. So follow along carefully as I place this circuit. I will also place the torches in a minute on the rest of the digits. Digits. And with that all in place, we can now go ahead and do the reset circuit. So you're now going to come over here and take an output from the fourth position. So basically over here where this block is up, you're going to come in one more and place a block on the side of this redstone, rest redstone block. With a comparator on top, going into a block with a line of five extending to the back of the clock. Yeah. Hey. Love you too. And then after that, we're gonna place in an AND gate just like so. And place redstone dust on top of all these blocks. And we'll also take an output from over here. So pretty much do the same thing. And now only one of these torches should be off. However, if this second one was off, it would trigger a reset circuit. Before we finish this off, I know you guys are wondering why I'm not placing the torches. So let's go ahead and let's place those over here right now so that the clock actually functions. So you're gonna come in here and just break out these redstone dust for now and place the torch as it does pulse. Then place it back temporarily after that and do this for each one.
My bad, I accidentally placed a block here. Make sure that this is a slab. And now that that's all done, let's get back to finishing up the reset circuit, and then this should complete the entire clock. So now you're going to come down from this torch that we placed on the side right here. So come down two blocks, and then out one towards the back of the clock. Place the torch on the side with redstone dust on top, and do this one more time. Except this time, this last torch will be facing towards the right-hand side of the clock. And make sure that it is turned off. And then do this one more time, making sure that the torch faces the right-hand side of the clock. Now we'll place a block down like so. Another block here, and block here. Place a comparator like so, right here and a redstone repeater on one tick. Also redstone dust right here. Now that that's done, we're gonna come ahead, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come out like this. So we're gonna come to these two blocks right here and place them like so. Also place a block right here. And this is gonna be the little clock that's gonna be able to reset this and give us a pulse so that this moves along to reset the clock to zero. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to place a torch underneath here, as well as a repeater on full delay right back here, and a redstone dust. So if we unfreeze this and remove the repeater, you'll notice that it starts moving, basically. That's what your pulsing should look like. And then we can go ahead and we can replace this repeater as we are not using this right now. And now to finish up this, we're going to extend a line all the way from this colon line, the line that's near the colons right here, all the way back to the torch. Make sure that your line of repeaters follows as I do here. So you're gonna have four one ticks, and then the rest will be all four ticks. I'm gonna test it also, just so you know I'm not lying. And with that all done, we should be all done the clock, and now we can test out the reset circuit. So come over here and temporarily press this button on the hours. And now, let's watch this thing reset for the first time. Your clock should now stop at zero, just like that. So we are pretty much done, and now we can turn on the clock and give it a test. However, there is a bug with the system, and it cannot be fixed. I'll tell you about it. So let's flick the lever down and we can see that the clock starts counting. However, depending if there is a zero, so I'll stop the clock here and I'll talk to you about this thing real quick. So. See, if there is a zero basically beside this one, which is at the end of the nine, or at the end basically of any number on the chained line, it will basically get stuck in here, which will show nothing on the input, because these two are pushed out temporarily because the torch is on, like over here. So basically, we cannot do anything about that. However, you can try to do something about that by putting a pulse limiter, but it is near to impossible as the clock size is very small. But it, however, after this, basically, the zero will not show for a whole hour since this is a zero beside the right of it. And then if this is a zero right here, this won't show for about a minute. If this is a zero, this won't show for at least 10 seconds. And if this is a zero, 
then this won't show for 10 minutes. But that's all for today's tutorial. Um, and I'll be turning the camera around now. All right, guys, thank you for watching today's uh, live and uh, tutorial. Um, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to the channel. Help me support me after literally being here for 91 minutes with y'all <laughs> doing this full tutorial. I'm so glad everything went well. Nothing died or nothing went wrong. So I'm hoping that I succeed in this um, kind of thing. And I hope that you guys also have another clock in your world now or just one clock in your world. So, uh, yeah, guys, I'm your old slogan. And I'll see you guys in the next video or live. Peace.